everybody, welcome to my home site and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am responding to an email from Lisa Alvarez where she sent me a link to this article. Um, now, I just want everyone to know, when I do emails, I do check for if there's anything that's like time sensitive, or at least I try to. Uh, there may be some things that I miss, but I don't think that I'm, you know, just skipping your email. I, I, I look for the ones that are like time sensitive, and this is one of them. So as many of you know, there's been this pretty large outbreak of tor tornadoes over the last couple days in the South. And uh, I thought that I would cover this. Uh, since Lisa sent me this email, uh, there's there's a few things to it, and then there's something kind of. I mean, it's it, it's just going to be for fun, you know. Don't take it too seriously. But there's something like a really interesting story that came up that um, could potentially have some meaning to it, like symbolically. I, I don't know, but it's just for fun. So don't get all up in arms, um, being like, "Oh, you're reading too much into it." It's just I don't know. Okay. All right, but first let's cover what's happened over the last couple of days. So this uh, this uh, article is a little bit old. It's because I couldn't get to it right away, but uh, let's just read some of it here. Tornadoes damaged an estimated 1,000 homes in Texas, and now the storm is spawning more twisters in Mississippi and Louisiana. And we're gonna we're gonna cover what has happened there. I have a more updated article. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, a storm system that on Monday brought 25 tornadoes to Texas, including two that may have damaged about 1,000 homes, was spawning more twisters Tuesday as it pushed east. Uh, quote, large and extremely dangerous tornado hit the New Orleans area Tuesday night, the National Weather Service said. Tornadoes uh, are uh, tornadoes also were hitting Mississippi as of 7 p.m. Tuesday. There were 18 reported according to the National Sur Weather Service's Storm Prediction Center. Okay, so <clears throat> we, we have this, uh, this outbreak. Now, I haven't seen anything necessarily that says that this is like anything record-breaking, but it does seem to be more on the severe side with the impact that it's had. But there are a couple interesting things about it. Um, and I'll, I'll point that out. Okay, now we're at weather.com. Cleanup begins after tornado outbreak across the south. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on this one. Uh, the New Orleans metro area and several communities in Mississippi were among the areas with the worst damage. Okay. Uh, state of emergency declared in four parishes. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards has declared a state of emergency in St. Bernard, Orleans, Jefferson, and St. Tammany parishes. Quote, unfortunately, our people have become... Ask, are sorry. you guys really friends out there? Yeah. What do you say? Where I've loved my job everywhere I've worked, and I've loved being a communicator. This, this, and kind of get this keeps... I keep putting the mute on it, and it keeps... Uh, I should have picked a different one. Um... Okay, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Okay, unfortunately, our people have become all too familiar with rebuilding after tragedy and loss, but it is never easy, Edwards said in a news release. About 300 National Guard troops have been activated. Initial surveys. Now, this uh, article is from, it's uh, within the last 19 hours. It was, it was posted 19 hours ago uh, at the time of this recording. So, uh, this is like the most updated one that I could find um, that's kind of like covers the entire thing. Initial surveys by the National Weather Service show the damage in Arabi, that's a part of Louise, of uh, New Orleans, was caused by an EF3 tornado uh, which has wind speed which has winds between 158 miles per hour and 206. And uh, here's a picture. I mean, look at this house. Like, the roof is just decimated, except for this uh, front part of the house. And then this house, it looks like its entire roof has come off. And you can see through this uh, doorway here, it looks like um, the wall on the far side of the house has come down. So it's a horrible situation. Okay, what else have we got? Here's some more pictures damaged houses. Okay, now, this is kind of odd. Look at this. <clears throat> Girl in wheelchair rescued from Wizard of Oz house. 
one of seven people reported injured in Arabi um, or Arabi. I'm sorry, I don't know. Ever since I went on my mission to Spain, my pronunciation, it's never recovered. It's never recovered. It's all messed up because, uh, I, and I just, maybe I need to put more work into it, but uh, Arabi, is that how we would say it in English? I, I don't know. Uh, Arabi, a uh, community adjacent to New Orleans. Uh, was a girl in a wheelchair who was rescued from a house that the tornado lifted off its foundation and dropped in the middle of the road, NOLA.com reported. That would be quite the experience. Um, now, obviously, you know, I'm sure it didn't go very high up into the air, uh, probably just like barely at all. Maybe it was kind of like dragged, but that's still... I, mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's happened before. I haven't heard of something like that happening, but that's interesting. Neighbors who rushed to assist likened it to a scene from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it's like that one scene where Dorothy's house is like way, way up uh, in the tornado. Quote, I saw the house and I saw my neighbor trying to get his daughter out of there. Resident Chuck Hirsch, who called 911, told the newspaper. They were screaming. His wife was hysterical. They were already traumatized from taking that Wizard of Oz ride. Jeez. Oh, so they were like, they were they were all in there uh, when it happened. Uh, first responders safely carried the girl from home. From the home. All right. Uh, here's some roads, like road damage. Seeing many more images of roads partially washed from the flooding early this morning, late last night, uh, in parts of Calhoun, Talladega, and Chilton counties. Wow. And that, where's this? That's in Alabama. So this is in Alabama from flooding. Um, okay. Now, okay, now look at this. <clears throat> Quote. Nearly two-thirds of households in the affected areas of St. Bernard and Orleans parishes don't earn, enough, don't earn enough to save for disasters, and many are still recovering from Hurricane Ida's impacts. Michael Williamson, uh, UWSELA president and CEO, said in a news release. So, this is an air. This is an area that got slammed really hard last year from Hurricane Ida, and Hurricane Ida uh, was about the same intensity as Hurricane Katrina. Um, it didn't. It didn't cause like Hurricane Katrina type damage, but it was still like just as strong. And uh, so, like the same area is getting hit. Getting hit twice. Right. Uh, keep, keep that in mind as we go on through the video. A video from an attic of a home damaged by the tornado uh, that touched down Tuesday night. And as you can see, uh, this is the attic and there's no roof. Okay. Tornado path, Hurricane Ida destruction overlap. Some of the hardest hit areas are still recovering from Hurricane Ida, which came ashore as a Category 4 storm and roared through southeast Louisiana seven months ago. St. Bernard Parish and Araby uh, residents are among those still rebuilding. They're still rebuilding from Hurricane Ida uh, seven months ago, and now this happens. Stacy Mancuso's family, family home lost its roof to Ida and had extensive water damage. They just finished repairs. Uh, Tuesday's tornado took off part of their new roof as uh, Mancuso, her husband, and two children huddled in their laundry room. That is heartbreaking. I, I would, I would probably have, a, I would have a breakdown. Uh, it's the third time they've had major weather damage to their home since Hurricane Katrina in 2005. So they got hit by Hurricane K Katrina, and then last year. Hurricane Ida, and now uh, this uh, tornado and storm outbreak that just happened. My gosh! Uh, here's another picture: a house without a without a roof. Uh, dozens of tornado reports from Texas to Alabama 
there have been more than five dozen reports of tornadoes from Texas and Oklahoma to Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama, according to preliminary accounts from NOAA's Storm Prediction Center. The number of reports doesn't indicate the true number of tornadoes, as some might be reported more than once. The official count will be, won't be finalized until the National Weather Service completes storm surveys. Some of those surveys are already underway, and more teams are fanning out today. Um, there's been power outages, but I checked the power outage map, and uh, it looks like those areas, everything's How many people can say that they speed. have a career doing Gosh, something dang they it, website. Okay. <clears throat> now let's go to this one. Uh, now this is in Texas, okay? Tornado survey. Jarrell tornado hit same areas as F5 in 97. So here you have another area that basically has been been hit twice. Um, so it, it's like, I'm not, okay, if you're living in that area, I'm not saying that, you know, you're wicked or, <laughs> or anything like that. But I, I just, I, I do have to kind of wonder a little bit if there's like certain areas that keep getting hit. Now, it could just be purely... Um, nature you know it maybe it is just how things play out but um I, I just wonder you know maybe does the lord have a purpose in hitting these same areas and i'm not this is not a commentary on new orleans being a, a bad place or any other place but it's just it's interesting i, I, I you know for me for my part i'm going to take note of it i wonder if that's you know what the lord does maybe um maybe certain areas uh need to get hit twice I, I don't know okay now this is uh here you see the video there's this this is what we're gonna be talking about you see this car this red pickup truck a tornado went over it and if it fell on its side and then it was spun around a few times here it comes again okay right here it's on its side it, t it turns around a few times, and then it uh, gets knocked back up on its wheels, uh, upright, and then he drives away. Now, this is the fun part of the, the video. Don't take it too seriously. Um, and I know I might just be looking too much into it, but I just want to show you some interesting things about this story. Okay? So, um, let's see. What do I got? Nerds! Dreaming of a new home? Oh, Let's my compare gosh. your way there. Before you Website. buy, NerdWallet Please helps you easily stop. compare rates and find the smartest mortgage for you. Use our regularly updated no, lists to compare the wrong one. cards that reward you for furnishing your new space. Okay, I don't know where that came from. Okay, <clears throat> so what happened here is this teenager, 16 years old, he was riding in this red pickup truck to a job interview, okay? And then that happened. He says, thankful thankful to God for giving me another chance in this life. He probably did this for some reason. Probably in the future, going to bring better plans into my life. Now, see, I, I don't know what kind of life he, he's living uh, or exactly what he's referring to here, but um, he's viewing this as you know, an act of God, essentially, um, an act of mercy and maybe something to, uh, change his life, uh, you know, in order to make his, his life better in the future so that he, maybe he takes a different path in his life. Uh, I don't know. You have to wonder how many of these types of stories are playing out every time that there's one of these disasters. Um, for some people, is it breaking the pride cycle? Is it, uh, giving people new perspective, uh, making them maybe reconsider their ways, right? So what's interesting about this, okay, I'm going to start to get into like the symbolism, and I'm not saying that this is uh, necessarily meaning anything, but there's just some interesting details in this story that I want to point out. So he was 16 years old. Right, and the the square root of sixteen is four. We just did a video talking about how when you have numbers that have like a a square root, and I know that every number or at least most numbers can have a square root, uh, but but this is like an even number. It's like a, a whole number. So 
uh, we talked about in a recent video how in in ancient times when they were talking um, about numbers in a symbolic way, they would like square or cube the number to like amplify its significance. I'm not saying that there's any significance here, but it's just interesting that he's 16 and it has a square root of four. Uh, his truck was red. Think about the second coming. <clears throat> okay. He was driving his father's truck. So this is his father's truck that he's driving. And his name is Riley Leon. Riley Leon. This is in Elgin, Texas. And I looked up the meaning of these different names. Elgin, Riley, Leon. Let's move on to this other thing here. <clears throat> uh, now, I try to find out exactly where he was driving. Uh, he was driving on Highway 290. And I looked up the place that he was going for an interview. It's this uh, Whataburger right here in Elgin, Texas. And as I was looking at it, I noticed some of the names of these streets that surround it. Uh, you have Nissan, which it's because there's a car dealership there, but you have Nissan, you have Roy Rivers, uh, Elizabeth River, right? And those names kind of struck me and I decided to look them up and see what they, see what they mean. You know, uh, I was just I was just kind of feeling it. I'm going to close out of this so that that audio doesn't come back up. But I will put the I'll put the links in the description. OK, so Riley, <clears throat> it means rye clearing. OK, so, you know, rye, rye, rye is essentially it, it's related to wheat. Right, you have like barley, you have wheat, you have rye. Uh, they're all part of the same tribe. Okay, um, it, it, they're you know with like the what do they call it? Uh, kingdom phylum class, you know, whatever. So they're part of the same tribe. They're r related. So that's that's interesting. This is like kind of a wheat like uh, plant. You know, it, it brings up thoughts of harvesting and stuff like that. So you have Riley, whose name means wheat clearing. I don't. I tried to look up what wheat clearing meant, if that was like harvesting or what that means exactly. Wheat clearing, but I wasn't able to, so I, I have no idea. So that could be harvesting. I'm not sure. Um, Leon. We we all know Leon means lion. So we have this uh, kind of wheat like uh, grain here, and then lion, and then. I looked up the names of these streets, Roy Rivers. Roy means king, okay, king. Elizabeth means God is my oath. Nissan, okay, now the the car brand or car company Nissan, it's not spelled the same as the month of Nissan, the Jewish month of Nissan, and it's not even related. Um, it says here that it's an abbreviation of the Tokyo stock market for uh, Nippon Sangyo, so Nissan. You know that's that's how it came to be, I guess. So <clears throat> look at these meanings really quick, okay? Now remember, this is a tornado, so it's a whirlwind, and I've done videos about tornadoes. I'll I'll put those in the description below. You got to watch those videos. <clears throat> because I think that tornadoes are significant. You know, they're whirlwinds. We had a very, I think, significant whirlwind in 1999 in Salt Lake City, uh, downtown. It went right by the temple. It actually, it actually went onto Temple Square, a little portion of <clears throat> Temple Square. I think there was a lot of symbolism behind that, so make sure to watch that video. Last year... We had Elder Dean Davies, uh, who passed away, and he, uh, two days after he passed away, there was a tornado in that area, it, along the Wasatch Front, which, that's not a place that you typically have tornadoes. They happen, of course, but they're rare. So he passes away, two days later, there's a tornado that that's in North Salt Lake, which is where he's from. I don't know. That's it's really weird. 
Okay, so I kind of, like, anytime there's, like, tornadoes and stuff like that, I kind of, like, my ears perk up a little bit. So, you have a tornado, and then you have this son who is driving his father's red truck. Uh, you have all these different meanings. I, I put it here so we could, like, look at it together. Um, so, again, so, oh, yeah, Eglin, Eglin, Texas, uh, that's derived from eagle. So, you have eagle. Rye, which is kind of like wheat, lion, king, God is my oath, and then Nisan. Uh, now, Nisan is actually the first month of the Jewish year. Even though the, the date changes um, uh, during Rosh Hashanah, which is, uh, that's during the seventh month, uh, the, the month of Tishri, uh, it's kind of weird how they do their calendar, but they consider Nisan the first month. Okay, and actually, uh, that's coming up uh, shortly. So it's the first month of the year of the Jewish, the Hebrew calendar, and it's the first month of spring. I pulled up the Jewish calendar here. Okay, so today is the 24th. Uh, exactly a week ago, we had Purim. And uh, someone commented on uh, my pronunciation of Purim. Um, I, I understand. She, she was like, well, it's, it's pronounced Purim. Which I'm sure that's true, but I've I've heard it pronounced Purim as well, and I don't feel comfortable saying Purim, just because that sounds. Um, I, I just I prefer Purim. Okay, <laughs> but thank you for your correction. She said that that's how her Jewish friends say to pronounce it. Um, so this event happened on on Monday, which was one, two, three, four days after Purim. So. Again, there's this the 16 year old. Um, the square root of 16 is four. This happens four days after Purim. I don't know. And then you can see right here, this is when Nissan starts. Is on the the second of um, what's it called? The, the the second of April. So we're approaching Nissan right now, and Nissan is the month where we have Passover. Right? We have the, the three feasts, the, the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is this entire thing right here, and then the Feast of First Fruits, which would be uh, the day after the first Sabbath. In, in this case, it would be Sunday the 17th. Okay, So, um, I don't know. I, I'm not going to try and like interpret that. I just find that a very coincidental, coincidental collection of uh, symbolic things. Eagle, rye, lion, king, God is my oath, Nissan, especially since we're approaching Nissan. Um, a 16-year-old boy driving his father's red truck. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and he was going to a job interview. Um I don't know, but I just put that out there just for fun. Uh, something to just kind of think about. I, I tend to think this is my own opinion. I think that the Lord likes to work in patterns and sometimes um, there's things that are like officially in the scriptures, they're canon, you know, different patterns, different foreshadowings. But I tend to think that you know, there's probably sometimes that patterns go outside of that. And they're not necessarily anything for us to that we have to like consider. But even like little events like this, you know, whether it's intended for an audience or not, I'd like to know after this life how many patterns, how prevalent patterns are in our life. You know, uh, when you when you watch or when you listen to a lot of like near death experiences, and you and you do have to take it with a grain of salt because some people are flat out they're fabricating stories, but I think that others are genuine, and um, there are many of them that talk about how you know the Lord He works through math, like math is. Uh, essentially like a language and uh, patterns are that's like a mathematical concept and um, 
so I wouldn't be surprised if like th if things like this that seem like they mean nothing, if they're kind of like a an echo of a pattern, you know, not necessarily something for you and me to be like, oh, gosh, this just happened. What does that mean? But but rather it's almost like seeing a shadow or it's seeing um, a ripple effect. Uh, you know, you get what I'm saying? So I'm not going to place like really great emphasis on this. Oh, and look at this. Prosperity Bank. <laughs> <laughs> prosperity bank uh you know and obviously i guess I'm, I'm i forgot to mention the main point it's a miracle that he survived he he was in his truck he got hit and then spun around by a tornado and then placed back upright and um and then he continued on and and he got the job by the way at whataburger so uh good for him uh, here's that the Highway 290. I don't know where he was on Highway 290. He could have been over here. He could have been coming from this way. I, I don't know. I wasn't able to find out exactly where it happened, and I, I couldn't find the tornado path. I don't think that they have that charted out yet. But this was his destination right here, right? His destination was Eagle, Rye, Lion, King, God is my oath, uh, Nissan, the month of Nissan. I don't know. So, okay, that's all I have for you in this one. Um, thank you, Lisa Alvarez, for the email and for this article. If you guys haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it. Uh, make sure to leave your thoughts, anything that hit you, um, any impressions in the comments below. Also, make sure to share this with anyone that might find this kind of stuff interesting, and I'll talk to you guys later.